Welcome back. All right, so I want to talk about David Clarkson. We're three days away from free agency. And I looked on the channel. I've done one video that talked about the trade of Clarkson where they traded his contract. But Clarkson's a cautionary tale. And he's one of the reasons why when I talk about players who've had a really, really good year in their contract year, maybe being a little bit more cautious as a GM uh, about whether or not to acquire him for how long and for how much. So Clarkson was a player who was undrafted. Uh, he is signed August 12th of 2005 by the New Jersey Devils. This, of course, being my Clarkson jersey. Uh, he makes his debut in 06-07. Seven games, three, three goals, one assist, four points, and six penalty minutes. Uh, penalty minutes go on the board in this one because that's kind of what, he know, what he's known for. Uh, three playoff games, two penalty minutes, and his cap hit was $538,333. So, decent. Uh, 07-08, 81 games, 9 goals, 13 assists, 22 points, 183 penalty minutes. The 183 penalty minutes was 7th in the National Hockey League that year. He played 5 playoff games, had 4 penalty minutes, no points there, and finished out his contract where he made $538,333 in cap. Uh, now, he gets a raise the following season. Uh, he signs a 2-year deal worth an average of $837,500. Very reasonable cap hit. And he rewards them. 82 games, 17 goals, 15 assists, 32 points, 164 penalty minutes, which was 10th. And he added two goals in the playoffs in seven games, 19 penalty minutes. So 9-10, he ends up missing significant time that year, 46 games, 11 goals, 13 assists, 24 points. He also records 85 penalty minutes in five playoff games, no points, and 22 penalty minutes for him. So... The overall numbers are pretty good, right? Um, he, he fits in in New Jersey. He's doing pretty well. His offensive numbers take a bit of a hit in 2010-2011, though. 82 games, 12 goals, 6 assists, 18 points. 160, 116 penalty minutes. And this is where he got a big raise, too. He was making $2,666,667. That's the cap hit. And it's a three-year deal. So the following season... He goes from maybe being seen as paid well to being underpaid. Uh, 80 games played, 30 goals, 16 assists, 46 points, 138 penalty minutes, which was ninth overall in the NHL. In 24 playoff games, as New Jersey goes to the Stanley Cup Final, 3 goals, 9 assists, 12 points, and 32 penalty minutes. Cap hit stays the same. So that 30-goal season, I think, is what colored the decision. Uh, to bring him in for big money to Toronto. The following season, he plays 48 games, has 15 goals, 9 assists, 40, 24 points. Remember, this is the lockout shortened season. So 48 games means he played every one. And 78 penalty minutes. Now what stood out that season was he had 15 points in the first 12 games. Which means he recorded 9 the rest of the season. And I remember arguing a lot online about how his scoring had dropped in the second half of the season. I, I just remember that being an arguing point that I had because he signs the deal with the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, at, at a cap hit of $5,250,000. So $5.25 million for seven years. Uh, it's a big contract. And he signs that July 5th of 2013. Now what gets him off to a slow start in Toronto as well is that the first of what would be two suspensions for him that season is a 10-game suspension for leaving the bench in a game against the Buffalo Sabres in preseason. If you leave the bench to join a brawl or to start a fight, you are going to get a 10-game suspension. And then it, it goes off the rails quickly. He ends up playing 60 games in Toronto that year, five goals, six assists, 11 points, and 93 penalty minutes. Now, at this point, it might have been salvageable, right? It, it might have been salvageable for Clarkson if he'd had a contract Toronto was able to move, if he'd been able to go somewhere else. But he doesn't. Uh, that contract is immovable. And not only that, but it has a 14-team no-trade clause, meaning almost half the league you can say, I'm not going there. And so that limits the choices for the Toronto Maple Leafs should they decide to move him. Now, he fails a physical the following season. He eventually gets in, but failing the physical, well, it's just when you play this style of hockey, you're going to get banged up. And that's what happened with Clarkson. Various injuries. Uh, 58 games played in Toronto in 2014-2015, 10 goals, 5 assists, 15 points, 92 penalty minutes. So it's a bit better than it was the year before, but it's still not worth that amount of money. So the Toronto Maple Leafs trade him on February 26th that year for Nathan Horton, who wouldn't play. Uh, so this is where LTIR becomes a, an issue. 
He plays three games in Columbus after the trade. No points, 14 penalty minutes. And again, that's with that cap hit of $5,250,000. Uh, 15 16, he only played 23 games that year. Two goals, two assists, four points, and 23 penalty minutes. And keep in mind, the cap hit is still there $5.25 million. So for Columbus, well, now he's in a position where he's not going to play there either. He's not able to do it. So he's going on LTIR. So at 570 games, his career essentially is over. 114 goals, 86 assists, 200 points, 992 penalty minutes, so just short of 1,000. 44 games in the playoffs, 5 goals, 9 assists, 14 points, and 79 penalty minutes. But his contract ends up getting traded around. So now Columbus is the one that's holding it, while the Nathan Horton contract had been traded over to Toronto. And in June 20, on June 21st, 2017, he's traded with a 2017 first. So they had to pay a steep price in order to trade him a second in 2019 and expansion considerations so they took William Carlson so the price for for that Clarkson contract ends up being pretty steep although Carlson's the one they wanted him to take there was no indication of, for Carlson in Columbus that he was going to become what he became when he got to Vegas and then of course July 23rd of 2019 he was traded by Vegas back to Toronto in exchange for Garrett Sparks because of the LTIR and what that meant to them so for Clarkson, uh, it is it is widely seen as one of the worst contracts handed out. But again, at the time that he was leaving New Jersey, he'd had 45 goals in the last two seasons. He had 15 goals in 48 games, and he was a very physical, tough guy. So as far as Toronto was concerned, they were picking up a 20, maybe 30 goal scorer who could go out there and fight. And who wouldn't want to pay $5 million for a guy who could do that? But it, it didn't work. It didn't work in Toronto as well as it had in New Jersey. And we'll never know if he had stayed in New Jersey whether or not the, the amazing drop that we saw in Toronto would have actually happened. Um, but yeah, Clarkson ends up uh, being paid out until 2020. Um, 38 years of age at this point. I think we can safely say he won't be a National Hockey League player again. But it's a cautionary tale. You know, we're a few, few days out now from free agency. And there's definitely some guys who've had big years. And that's why I talk about it. I talk about guys having big years in their contract year and say, hey, just, you know, be careful with this because Clarkson had a pretty good year on the surface of it, but 15 of those points are in the first 12 games. Uh, Clarkson was a good player. Uh, he was a tough player. The 10-game suspension was tough, and then he had a one-game suspension that year as well. But, yeah, um... Yeah, I mean, he never played a game in Vegas, and then, of course, after going back to Toronto either. It has to be tough, too, you know, going on LTIR, being a competitive player like Clarkson was, and, of course, probably being remembered as having one of the worst contracts. I mean, he still gets the money, so he's probably pretty happy about that, but being associated with what's seen widely as one of the worst contracts isn't great. But that's the thing. At the time that Toronto signs that contract, there were a lot of Leafs fans that had some optimism that he could still be a 20-goal scorer, he could still go out there and fight, and that was something they felt they needed, desperately enough to sign for that big contract. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. I can absolutely do a video on the worst contracts in the history of the league. But what's interesting when you look at the worst contracts is always look at the season or two seasons prior to that contract being signed. And very often it will be a player who had a really good season or a really good couple of seasons and they got paid based on that and then they couldn't live up to that expectation. It does happen. It will happen again. Um, and, and we can never tell at the time of free agency which one necessarily won't age well. Although there are some that people have called relatively early. Tyler Myers here in Vancouver comes out as, as one that, yeah, no, they were right on that one. But let me know your thoughts. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.